Hi there! Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening whenever it is that you are watching this video. We are entering into chapter 8. In this chapter, we have three subtopics. Number one is the mammalian heart and its regulation. So we're going to learn about the anatomy of mammalian hearts using human hearts as the base example. Also, how it beats, how we regulate the heartbeat. And then we'll go into 8.2 in the next video, which is lymphatic system and its role in transport. And 8.3, transport in plants. In today's lesson, we are going to learn about mammalian heart and its regulation. So my expectations for you by the end of this lesson is that you would be able to explain the initiation of a heartbeat. You should be able to explain what is a cardiac cycle. And you should be able to explain ECG by emphasizing on the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. This may sound a little bit difficult now if you never read this before, but after you read it, you're going to find that it's actually quite simple and straightforward. And last but not least, you will explain the factors that affect your heartbeat. Before we go into the nitty gritty parts of it, let us learn about heart structure. So this is how you would usually draw hearts in school, I, I think. And this is how we draw hearts as a scientific diagram. Um, you don't need to learn to draw the whole thing on the right, but I think you can follow me as we sketch out this diagram of a heart. So we have this simplified diagram of a heart. You can pause the video, grab paper or grab your book, and then try to follow this sketch with me. So if you're ready, I'm going to begin. I am drawing the base of the heart, yang di bawah, sebelah bawah luar. And then I'm going to draw a rough shape for the right atrium and a rough shape for the left atrium. And then I'm going to draw the right ventricle and then the left ventricle and then I fill in all the tubes, um, all the blood vessels and stuff that are on top. That did go by a little bit fast, so you could use this video as a reference for you to follow your drawing, or you could trace over one of your lecture notes, one of your books. Okay, kamu boleh coba ikut daripada buku, daripada lecture note, ataupun mau coba ikut saya punya lukisan pun boleh. Okay, so let us look at the anatomy of this heart. So this is your heart and over here on this side is the left atrium. So notice that diagram dia sebelah sini tapi saya cakap kiri. How to remember is I would like you to draw it on a piece of paper. After you draw your heart on a piece of paper, you bring the drawing to you. Kalau kamu lupa mana satu kiri, mana satu kanan, kamu ambil tu kertas yang ada lukisan jantung tu dan kamu letak di dada. Lukisan di sebelah luar. Lukisan di sebelah luar. That way you know that this side is right, this side is left. Itu kalau kamu lupa mana satu kiri, mana satu kanan lah. Okay, so I'm going back to this slide. Okay, this is the left atrium. And then after the left atrium, you have the left ventricle. After the left ventricle, over on this side, we have the right atrium. And... Under the right atrium is the right ventricle. If you notice something, the left ventricle has a thicker wall compared to the right ventricle. Because the left side, the left ventricle, will carry oxygenated blood, which has higher pressure. The right side carries deoxygenated blood, which has lower pressure. Okay? So that is the first step in drawing and labeling our heart structure. Other things that you should know exist in your heart is the pulmonary veins. Nama dia pulmonary vein sebab dia datang daripada paru-paru pulmonary vein sebab dia bawa darah masuk ke dalam jantung. Any blood vessel that is carrying blood into the heart is a vein even though it is oxygenated blood from the lungs. And this one over here is the aorta. The main artery carrying blood away from the heart. Ini adalah aorta. Aorta ni dia daripada sini, dari ventricle. 
Asal dia keluar saja daripada valve itu adalah aorta. Next, you have the vena cava. The vena cava are the main veins that carry deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body into the heart. Ini membawa darah yang sudah kurang oksigen daripada seluruh badan masuk ke dalam jantung. So, dia akan masuk ke dalam atrium, masuk ke dalam ventricle and then keluar melalui pulmonary arteries. So, this is deoxygenated blood. Pulmonary means dia menghalak ke paru-paru. Arteries means this is a blood vessel that is going out of the heart. Okay, ingat cara kita bagi definisi untuk artery dengan vena adalah sama ada dia sedang keluar ataupun masuk daripada jantung. Kalau dia sedang masuk jantung, tidak kira dia oxygenated, deoxygenated, dia adalah vein. Kalau dia keluar dari jantung, tidak kira dia oxygenated kah, deoxygenated, dia adalah artery. Okay, so speaking of blood flow, blood comes in here, blood goes out. You also have valves, V-A-L-V-E-S, valves that prevent backflow of blood in the heart. Okay, ini adalah meng, um, mengelakkan daripada kita punya darah ter, ter, tergostan, ter... Um, like go in reverse we don't want it to go in reverse so we have valves to make sure that it is in place so in your heart you have two atrioventricular valve atrioventricular valve means that it is between the atrium and the ventricle you have two you have the bicuspid and the tricuspid atrioventricular valves tricuspid atrioventricular valves Ada tiga injap. Itu ada pada sebelah kanan. And then you also have the bicuspid to atrioventricular valves. That is on your left side. And then exiting the ventricles into the vein or the aorta is semilunar valves. Dua-dua ada nama yang sama, semilunar valves. Supaya darah yang keluar daripada jantung tidak termasuk balik ke dalam ventricle. Okay. Let us look at the flow of blood into the heart once again. Oxygenated blood goes in from the pulmonary vein into the left atrium and then flows into the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, out of the aorta and to the whole body. Deoxygenated blood will come from the whole body, travel in through the vena cava, yang di atas tu adalah superior vena cava, yang di bawah inferior vena cava, masuk ke dalam right atrium. After it enters the right atrium, it goes into the right ventricle and then out through the pulmonary arteries. This is the flow of blood in the heart. One side will be carrying oxygenated blood and the other side carries deoxygenated blood. The rhythmic movement, uh, macam mana jantung kita mau contract and relax, it is coordinated by several nerves. Okay, ada beberapa saraf, beberapa kumpulan saraf yang kawal macam mana jantung kita berdenyut. So, the heart is myogenic. That means if you separate the heart muscles from the rest of the body, it can still beat on its own. The heartbeat is generated and controlled by the nerves that are in the heart. The brain does something, but we'll go to that in a minute. Before I go into the whole process of how heartbeats are initiated, I would like to first introduce you to the nerves. We are going to start with this one right here. This one is called the sinoatrial node, ataupun nama singkatan dia SAN. So, dia akan ada di sebelah atas dalam ruangan atrium sebelah kanan. So, it will be around the top of the wall of the right atrium. The next nerves that you need to know about is the atrioventricular nodes. Nama singkatan lain dia, AVN. 
it's going to delay the nerve impulses from the SAN. And then it's going to relay those impulses to the bundle of his fibers. So ini septum, kawasan di tengah-tengah yang memisahkan antara kiri dengan kanan ven punya ventricle. Di dalam sini ada banyak saraf-saraf yang tebal. Saraf di dalam ni kita panggil bundle of his fibers. And they extend all the way throughout the walls of the ventricle. There are also specialized muscle fibers called Purkinje fibers that help transmit the rest of the nerve impulses throughout the heart. So we are going to label them one by one. This is the sinoatrial node. This is the atrioventricular node or AVN. These are the bundle of his fibers. These are the Purkinje fibers. Like I said, the rhythmic sequence of heart muscle contractions is coordinated by these nerves, which is the sinoatrial nodes, the SA node, which is the initial stimulus origin, and the atrioventricular nodes, ataupun nama lainnya AV nodes. So let us look at the step-by-step -step initiation of a heartbeat. First of all, SA node will generate electrical impulse. Dia adalah pacemaker, dia yang start bagi signal. This electrical impulse or this signal will spread rapidly through the atria's walls, causing both atria to contract simultaneously. Dia kasih lepas saja dia punya karen, dua-dua kiri dan kanan atrium akan contract. The nerve from the S, uh, the impulse from the SA node will be delayed for about 0.1 seconds at the atrioventricular ataupun AV node. Bila dia sampai kepada AV node di sini, dia akan ditahan selama 0.1 saat. Next, the signals will be passed to the heart apex. Dia akan dipas kepada hujung jantung. Daripada AV node, dia akan pas kepada hujung jantung melalui bundle branches ataupun bundle of his fibers. Bundle of his fibers ni dia boleh dibahagikan kepada kiri dan kanan. Cabang kiri, cabang kanan. Lepas melalui cabang kiri dan cabang kanan, dia akan melalui Purkinje fibers, specialized muscle fibers that can transmit electrical impulses very, very well. And then, these signals or these electrical impulses will spread throughout both ventricular walls. When it passes, uh, when it spreads to both ventricular walls, it's going to cause both ventricles to contract and pump blood. So this is an animation of how those signals happen. So they start dengan SA node di atas. Dia pas kepada dua-dua atria. Dua-dua atria mengecut. Sampai kepada AV node, dia akan ditahan sementara. Lepas tu kena pas melalui bundle of his fibers. Melalui kiri dan kandan bundle branches. Dan melalui pekenje fibers. Bila dia sudah limpas melalui all the pekenje fibers, the ventricles will contract. And then the heart will pump blood. This is a very cool animation, isn't it? This heart rate, yes, the heart starts its own beating, but our brain can control and influence how fast or how slow it wants the heartbeat to go. So we have a heart control center here in our medulla oblongata, the cardiac center is connected to heart by autonomic nervous system, which is done via two nerves. The sympathetic nerve, which gives stress, increases heart rate by speeding up the pacemaker, and releases noradrenaline. So, ini adalah saraf yang suruh jantung kita untuk berdenyut dengan lebih cepat. And it is also connected by a parasympathetic vagus nerve. So this parasympathetic vagus nerve will tell our heart to relax, to decrease heart rate, and to release acetylcholine. 
simpatetik menggalakkan jantung kita untuk jadi lebih laju, lebih kuat, lebih cepat. Parasympathetic, suruh kita relax, chill, lambat, lambat. This whole uh, nerve impulse plus the contraction of the atrium and the ventricles makes up the cardiac cycle. Denyutan jantung kita boleh membentuk satu kitaran yang kita panggil sebagai cardiac cycle. So this is a diagram of the cardiac cycle. The definition that we have for cardiac cycle is, it is one complete sequence of heart pumping and filling, which involves heart contraction, systole, to pump bloods, and relaxation, diastole, to fill its chambers with blood. Dalam arti kata lain, kitaran denyutan jantung kita tu ada uh, ada part di mana uh, jantung kita akan pump, dia akan mengecut dan dia akan keluarkan darah. Dan ada masa dia relax dan dia dipenuhi dengan darah. Take note of the words systole and diastole. Systole means dia contract. Diastole means dia relax. In the average human adult, one complete cardiac cycle is about 0.8 seconds. Maybe a little bit different person to person, but the average is 0.8 seconds. Daripada dia, uh, daripada dia start sini sampai dia bermula kitaran lagi. So let's look at this step by step. We are going to start when the atri atrium is systolic and the ventricles are diastolic. So let's look at stage 1, atrial, systole, ventricular, diastole. In this stage, both the atria will contract. The pressure in the atrium is high compared to in the ventricles. This will push both of the atrioventricular valves open and blood remaining in atria is being pushed out into the ventricle. So atrium mengecut Ventricles relax, so they akan dipenuhi dengan darah. Step number two, ventricular systole, atrial, diastole. At this stage, both ventricles will contract, increasing the pressure inside it. So both ventricles contract, increasing pressure inside it, compared to both atrium. Right now, the atrium are relaxing. So this will push both atrioventricular valves shut. Ada valve kan, ada injap yang menghalang darah daripada terpergi belakang. The atrioventricular valves will be shut. When the valves are shut, some of the blood that is trying to go out into the atrium will hit against the closed valves. Jadi bila itu injap tutup, when the valve closes, and when these red blood cells are hitting against the valves, that is how your heart produces that first lump sound, yang tu, punya bunyi. And in this step also, at the same time, the pressure from both ventricles are higher compared to the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So, pressure from the ventricles will push the semilunar valves open, and blood will flow out, flow out of the a of the aorta and pulmonary arteries. Next, the heart will start to fill up with blood again in the third step, which is atrial and ventricular in diastole. So right now, both the atrium and the ventricles are relaxed, and the pressure in both those chambers will decrease. It becomes lower than the pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So the semilunar valves will shut. The recoil of blood against the closed valves will produce the second sound, which is dump. So your heart will produce lump, dump sound. Okay, bila dia relax, sini punya pressure tinggi, sini punya pressure rendah, darah mau masuk balik jantung, injap tertutup, darah terlanggar injap, terhasil lah bunyi dump. Right now, the pressure in both atrium is low and thus drawing blood from the vena cava and the pulmonary vein into the right and left atrium respectively. Sekarang, sini punya pressure low, so darah akan masuk secara automatic, secara passive. 
As the blood fills both atria, it will push both the atrioventricular valves open and blood will enter both ventricles passively. Dalam erti kata lain, dalam poin empat saat ini, jantung sedang dipenuhi dengan darah. Okay, we are going to try and remember this using a hands-on learning technique. So this is something I learned from the other lecturers here in KML and I hope this will benefit you. You, I hope you're still watching or listening to this video. If you haven't been looking at the screen, now is the time for you to come back to the screen. If you are holding your phone with one hand, you still have the other hand. So make sure you use it. If you're using on laptop, good. Now you have two hands. All right. You need to think of this technique in this way. The number of unfolded fingers you have is what is happening at each step. Bila kita, uh, kita akan guna salah satu tangan kita, I'm going to use my left hand. Okay, I'm going to use my left hand. So we're not going to use our thumb. We are going to focus on our pointing finger and our three fingers. So your upper finger, this upper finger, will represent your atrium. Kalau kamu mau, kamu boleh tulis lagi tangan kamu sendiri. I'm going to write on my hand. This is going to be the atrium. The three fingers down here, Yang tiga di bawah ni, mewakili kamu punya ventricle. So, I'm going to draw here ventricle, ventricle, ventricle. If your finger is folded, kalau jari kamu terlipat, that means that part of the heart is contracting. It is in systole. If you let it go, if it is not folded, that means that part of the heart is in Diastole. Dia sedang relax. Kamu boleh label jari kamu dengan AT untuk atrium, VT untuk ventricle, ST untuk systole, DT untuk diastole. Okay, so just showing you this is how my heart looks right now. I am not going to use my thumb. I'm only going to use my pointing finger and my three lower fingers. This is my atrium. These are my ventricles. Let's start with the first step. So with the first step, this is representing atrial systole, ventricular diastole phase. So sekarang saya tengok saya punya atrium terlipat. My atrium is contracting. My ventricles are relaxed. This is the first step in your heartbeat. Uh, Coming from here, you can express that the pressure in atrium is high and low in ventricles. The AV valve will open, so it allows blood to flow from atrium to ventricle. The blood volume in the ventricle will increase, and the atrium will take about 0.1 seconds to fully contract. The next step, pinky finger out, three small three fingers come back in. Okay, sekarang. Second step, jari kamu begini. In step 2, we have a ventricular systole and atrial diastole phase. That means your ventricles are contracting and your atrium is relaxing. The pressure in the ventricle is high and the pressure in the atrium is low. The AV valve will be closed. There is a lub sound produced while the STEMI lunar valve is opened. The blood will flow from ventricle into aorta or pulmonary artery. The blood volume in ventricle will decrease and the ventricle will take about 0 0.3 seconds to fully contract. Last but not least, everything is going to relax. So as everything relaxes, this is the atrial and ventricular diastole phase. So both the atrium and the ventricles are relaxing. The pressure in both atrium and ventricle are low. Pressure in the aorta and the pulmonary artery will be high. The semilunar valve will be closed and a dub sound is produced, while the AV valve will be opened. Blood will flow from aorta, from aorta to lung and pulmonary artery to whole body respectively. Meanwhile, new blood flow from uh, flow into atrium and ventricle from vena cava and pulmonary vein. The 
the blood volume in the ventricle will increase and this relaxing process takes about 0 0.4 seconds. So, nanti bila kamu mau revise, kamu boleh coba balik. Start dengan tangan kamu. Ada diagram yang membantu di sebelah kanan. You start with step number one where the top finger is folded. Step number two and step number three. Nanti kamu praktis praktis lah di bilik. Kamu lipat-lipat tangan kamu untuk ingat step 1, 2, 3. So, start dengan step 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, um, shrinking my head again. Once again, uh, this contraction of the heart muscles is coordinated by the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular nodes. This GIF, I chose this animation because it's been very helpful. We are looking at the electrical impulses and we're also looking at how those impulses will look when we put them through a machine, which brings me to the next point that I want to teach you, which is electrocardiogram ataupun ECG. Apa benda ni ECG? You can already guess what it is. Um, it is a record of the electrical signals or impulse in your heart muscles during each cardiac cycle. It consists of three events, which is the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. So, kalau kamu tengok ini, P wave adalah ini, QRS adalah ini, yang memuncak, lepas itu turun, lepas itu naik balik. The T wave adalah ini, yang kecil. And if you're wondering, yes. This is the thing that you see in nearly every hospital scene. Tidak kira lah kamu tengok ke drama ka, drama orang putih ka, kartun ka. Ada saja uh, babak di hospital, ada bunyi mesin yang tit, 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 ECG lah tu. Okay, any hospital dramas you see with the tit, tit, tit and the heartbeat and the people dying with the heartbeat, that is this electrocardiogram ataupun ECG. So let's look at this ECG in its three events. Okay, kita tengok tiga event yang ada dalam ECG ini. The first of these events is the P wave, which is the small first bump you see on the ECG. What happens during the P wave? The P wave is when the sinoatrial node generates impulse and the impulse spreads to the atria wall. After P wave begins, the atria will contract. And then you will have atrial depolarization. Next is the QRS complex. Kalau kamu tengok di dalam uh, wayang, yang part yang dia tit besar itu, itu adalah QRS complex. This will occur 0 0.2 seconds later. 0 0.2 seconds after the P. It's Impulse, it is when the impulse spread in the ventricles. Itu impulse kan dia daripada SAN, pergi AV node, daripada AV node turun itu bundle of fibers dan melalui pekerja fibers. That is what is happening during the QRS complex. So at this point, you will have ventricular depolarization. And the ventricles will contract after the QRS complex begins. Alright, after the QRS complex is the T wave, ataupun yang bump yang kecil yang di hujung sekali. What happens here is there will be electrical changes that trigger ventricular relaxation. And the atrial and ventricular repolarization occurs. So, it is quite simple. The ECG is quite simple. Memang itu tiga saja kamu perlu ingat yang P, yang QRS, dengan T. Okay, so you should be able to label the waves if I give you a blank diagram. And you should be able to describe what is happening in the heart during P wave, what is happening in the heart during QRS, and what is happening in the heart during T wave. Ingat, depolarization, depolarization. Repolarization. Okay.
So macam mana kadang-kadang uh, kadang-kadang kita punya jantung ECG daripada begini dia boleh jadi begini. Daripada tit tit dia jadi tit 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 tit. Well, let us look at the two factors that we know about that will affect the heartbeat. The two factors that you will learn about is change in blood pH and another one is temperature. So let us look at the first factor that affects heartbeat. This first factor is change in blood pH. I think you know from last chapter why change in blood pH matters. It's because low pH is caused by increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood such as during strenuous exercise as a result of greater respiratory rate. So the heartbeat will increase, thus increasing the rate at which carbon dioxide is delivered to the lungs for removal. Jantung, uh, denyutan jantung kita akan dipercepatkan supaya jantung kita dapat hantar carbon dioxide kepada paru-paru. After some time, the carbon dioxide is removed and the pH will become higher. High pH means that there is a decrease in the concentration of carbon dioxide and the heart rate will slow down again. The other factor is a change in body temperature. So an increase of only 1 degree Celsius will raise the heartbeat by about 10 beats per minute. Why would your body raise its temperature? Well, the increase in body temperature could be because of a fever or because you are doing a strenuous activity. Mungkin sebab kamu demam ataupun sebab kamu sedang bersenam. So this causes the sinoatrial node to discharge impulses more quickly and thereby increasing the heart rate. And the heart will then beat faster. After some time, there will be a decrease in body temperature Decrease in body temperature means it will decrease your heart rate and strength of contraction. Your heart will then beat slower. Begitu sajalah kalau orang ada orang tanya kamu factors that affect heartbeat, ini saja kamu perlu explain bagi dia. So just a quick summary of what we learned about in the heart 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 stuff today. A heart to heart talk, we learned about the structure of the heart. We learned about initiation of a heartbeat, how it begins with the SAN to the AVN to the bundle of his fibers to the Perkin J fibers. And we learn about a cardiac cycle. And in the cardiac cycle, I taught you how to remember using the fingers. Oh, sorry, not wrong finger. Using the fingers. So you start with step one, step two, step three. And then we also talk about the ECG, the electrocardiogram, which is the beep, beep, beep thingy. And you should remember the waves. And last but not least, we talk about factors that affect heartbeat. So I hope you're able to study on your own after this. Read through the notes again. Watch this video again if you don't understand it. And please do the worksheet for 8.1 and 8.2 that I have sent in the Google Classroom. That's all for this video and I will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye!